Bwana Yesu asifiwe. I still feel like singing Mtetendi Yesu. Yeah. And uh, just allow me to sing the song. Nisiko imba nyimbo za imani yetu kwa ibada na sijanga sijaimba. Ah, praise the name of the Lord. Mm-hmm. So, if you are at home, you are most welcome to our today's worship service at Glory Baptist Church as we end the month of uh, June. Uh, we are still on evangelism missions next month. is men's month again. And we thank God for this too. Let us sing together. If you are at home and you have Nimbo Zaymanier, you can stand for the song number 175. And if you are here today again, welcome. 175. Mteteni Yesu. Kwa maana wali unyuea mwamba wa rogo ulio wafuata na mwamba ule ulikuwa ni kristo. Mteteni Yesu. 175. Okay, twin. the great command and the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ. And again, the title is what to remember in the great commission and in the great command of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
We are reading from uh, John chapter 20 and verse 19 to 20. Uh, we can read even up to 23. My Bible, NIV says, we have read Swahili and I'm reading the NIV now. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Uh, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven as well. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We see that Apostle John here is revealing three things uh, that we can remember in the, great, in the areas of the Great Command and the Great Commission. And the three things, number one, he talks about the authority that goes with the Great Command and the Great Commission. There is also the demonstration of our Lord Jesus Christ and there is the forgiveness. Three things just come openly as far as this command, as far as this commission from John is concerned. John is known as the beloved disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. The son of Zebedee, he was also the brother to James. Uh, James, one of the disciples also, who was used by Jesus to preach the gospel. And around 85 to 90, after the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Apostle John writes and he carries a message that he wants people to hear and to listen even today. And the message is that he wants to prove that Jesus who came to us, Jesus who has lived with us, Jesus who was crucified, died and rose from the dead, he is the son of God and all people who believe in him will have eternal life. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. So John is writing with all humor. In the beginning, this Jesus was there. He calls Jesus the one. He was there. And this Jesus has now come in body, in, in flesh, so that he can fix the solution of saving humankind. And he says, just believe in him. I want you to see what he's saying in chapter 20 and verse 30, 30 and 31. This is the very reason as to why we have the gospel of John. Verse 30, the Bible says, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But this, what we are reading now, like in John 21, 19, these are written that you may believe. Who is this to believe? Me and you. You may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that by believing this, you may have life in his name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why we have the Gospel of John in the Scriptures. And again, you can trust him because he was one of the closest friends, the closest people of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when he brings this, I saw about three things that came up quickly in these words of the Great Commission. And I bring this message. What can we remember whenever we think about the Great Command and the Great Commission? Mm -hmm. Why am I calling it the Great Command and the Great Commission? Jesus has commanded us. And now when it comes on us, it is a commission. We have to fulfill it. We have to move forward and make sure we are doing what our master has commanded us to do. One, the authority to witness comes from God. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. As a believer, as a follower in Jesus Christ, you don't need to be ashamed. You don't need to be worried. How am I going to do this? How can I lead a person to Jesus Christ? Just the way I told you when I was bringing the message from Mark, the Gospel of Mark, Again, the gospel according to St. John, it is revealing that the authority for us to witness and share about Jesus comes from God himself. Mm. It is not about our business. He knows what to do as long as we take a step to obey his command. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. This is the very first outline, by the way, though it was written 
between 85 and 90 after the death of Jesus, it does not mean that this was the latest message of the four Gospels. No, this was one of the very first times that Jesus spoke to his disciples. Actually, this information, if you read it clearly, it was given to the disciples the very Sunday Jesus rose from the dead. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible records it was Sunday evening. The very day Jesus rose from the dead, that evening, Jesus came to his disciples. They were hiding because they were fearing the schemes, the evil plans, the Jews were planning against him. You need to remember that when Jesus rose from the dead, what happened? The disciples were accused that they are the ones who stole the body of Jesus Christ. And yet they are not the ones. They were not there. So that is why these disciples were hiding in a house. They were hiding. They did not want to expose themselves. But Jesus came to them. And when he came to them, he says, Peace be upon your lives. Amen. What does this mean? You have all the authority. You have all that you need to move forward. Amen. You see the word peace in Greek refers to everything that pertains to the kingdom. Amen. You have everything that you need as far as the kingdom is concerned. Mm -hmm. You have no excuse. You cannot say, oh, I would have brought people to Jesus, but because I love this, peace be with you, godliness be upon your life. Amen. Receive everything that you need. And so as a result of this, actually it was, it, was, it was a miracle of its own because these people were closed inside the house. They had locked all the doors in fear of what might happen. But Jesus was able to get inside the room and command them and commission them, go and preach this peace of the kingdom. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. So we carry a father. Our father, our father God who is in us, is a miracle working God. He's there to help us move forward. He's there to give us the authority to preach the gospel. He is the way, he is the life, and he is the truth. Oh, yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He commands and he commissions us to go and witness the message, the good news of salvation. Mm. The authority to do this comes from himself. Amen. I told you the other time about a person who was asked how this world exists. And kind of he had gone to a, a Sunday school class. He knew how the world came into being. And what he did was simple. He just said, the word of God says God created the world. Amen. The first day, the second day, and everything he did was good. And the sixth day, he created human beings. As he was sharing those stories, as he was sharing the story about creation, the next person who was listening to him decided to give his life to this God who created the universe. Yeah. The authority does not come from us. Mm -hmm. The authority comes from God himself. Yeah. When you take a step of obeying the great command, and the great commission. The authority to do it comes from himself. From Amen. God himself. Secondly, Jesus demonstrated the whole process. Jesus Christ demonstrated the whole process. We should not think of what we need to do or what we shall do. Jesus has already done everything that we are supposed to do. He demonstrated the whole process of witnessing. There is no any stone that is left unturned in the great command and the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 20 tells us in the same chapter of 21, the Bible says, verse 20, I have read this again. After he said this, he showed them his hands and the side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. He, what, why was he showing them all these things? He was proving to them that was, what was promised, what was said, what was to come, it is already done and it is already accomplished. Mm. You can look my hands. The other, the, about four or five days, they were already finished. I was dead, but now I'm alive. Mm. Everything is accomplished. Mm. Jesus demonstrated the whole process. Mm. So as a church today in the 21st century, it has already been done for us. Ours is just to obey and move forward. He showed them his signs and even the hands. He had entered the closed room without even opening the doors. A sign that everything is already done and we can move forward. Yeah. Jesus Christ himself showed an example 
by the words and even actions. Amen. He died for us. He finished everything for us. And so Jesus Christ now stands and he stays with us when we move forward to preach the good news of our Lord Jesus. Jesus called his disciples into service and commissioned them. Just the way he did that to his disciples, he's doing to us today. We have to move forward and preach the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. One thing that blessed my heart is that Jesus never failed them. I'm trying to imagine what he had told them to do. He had already prepared them even before he went to the cross. But to a certain level, they started like not believing what had happened. That is why they were even hiding. Some of them had even gone back to start fishing, to, back to their professions. Like the way I know, we know, I know very well. So many of even Christians who used to go to church, to active in churches, they might not be active even today. But when Jesus came back to them, the Bible says, he did not discourage them. He did not bring them down. He did not even rebuke them, but he encouraged them. The same book of uh, John, talks about even preparing a morning breakfast for them so that they can be strong, they can be encouraged again, they can get the energy they needed to move forward and do the great work of our Lord Jesus. The way he encouraged them, even the church, and even us today, we are encouraging you to fulfill the great command and the great commission of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Jesus demonstrated everything towards the process. And even in the process, we do not lack anything. Ours is to move forward in obedience and preach the good news of our Lord Jesus. Mm. Finally, the authority to proclaim the forgiveness of sins. This is the best. Wow. And when I was reading this, I was like, will my hearers today, my listeners today, are they really going to get this point? That the authority to proclaim the forgiveness of Jesus Christ over sins is upon our life. Did you hear that? Yes. The authority to proclaim the forgiveness of sins is on his children. Amen. Is on his church. Is upon us. Verse 23 records and says, the Bible says in verse 23, if you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. You may not understand what this says. Well, after Jesus had given his disciples the Holy Spirit, because the Bible says he breathed unto them the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Greek word for that is the Holy Ghost. That is where the King James Version takes the word. Instead of using the Holy Spirit, he uses, the author uses the Holy Ghost. Which means it is a special grace, wind that was blown in the lives of these people mm -hmm. to bring change. To cause things to work differently in their life. Mm -hmm. One of the great blessings that was given unto the disciples of our Lord Jesus. And again, it is given unto us. We carry the power to forgive sins. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And that is why when I lead a person to Jesus Christ. When a person accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior. And under this authority, if I declare that your sins are forgiven, this person is forgiven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you ever know that? Mm -hmm. You carry the authority to declare freedom over bondage of sin in the lives of people, and they walk free. Amen. It is true. Someone declared that to me. That is why I am walking free. Praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Amen. I know there is a person who declared that unto your life. And that's why you are free. By the way, I want you to know and learn that the things of the Spirit, they are not only just learned. You don't just learn them. But you just need to hear and grasp them. For example, even right now, this Sunday, I carry the grace to declare, even over your sickness, that you are healed. And when you receive it by faith, you receive the healing in Jesus. I carry the grace to declare, that you are blessed. Amen. And if you join with me in that anchor and say, yes, I receive the blessings, you receive the blessings. Amen. After all, what is more greater? Is it the material things or the forgiveness of sin? 
And it is the forgiveness of sin. And if you can be forgiven sin by a declaration, what about the other things that follow this forgiveness? You will receive them in Jesus' name. So as Christians, we are given the authority to declare freedom over the lives of people. So many people are bound in difficult situations. There are people who are bound in sin. People are bound in sicknesses. People are bound even in the way of thinking. The other day I was thinking about the, what, what, the, what Paul teaches in the book of Galatians about a curse. And I was realizing even so many people are even in the church, but they are still operating under a curse. You might be even here today, or even at home, but you are under a curse. Mm. You can be even singing, but the curse is still binding you. Yeah. Because I was stressing how these curses come upon our lives. That is why I'm sharing with you the message of the, what I've called the unholy trinity. That you may come out of shame, you may come out of fear, and you may walk freely as a child of God. Amen. Otherwise, you can be there, you can be out there thinking that you are well, and yet you are not well. Mm. Thinking that you are very far, you are blessed, but you are not yet blessed. Mm. Because being blessed starts with knowing the wisdom and the knowledge of our Father. Oh, yes. Amen. When you know the wisdom and knowledge of our Father in heaven, then you are blessed. Mm. Do you know what? This is very important because as far as the salvation of humanity is concerned, only Jesus Christ has the authority to forgive sin. Amen. No one else. Yeah. Only Jesus went through the process of becoming a Messiah. And he went through the process. And he can set people free from their sin. Amen. And that is why when he breathed this life to the disciples, when he breathes this life to us, we also receive the grace to declare freedom over the lives of people. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm thinking of what happened in the same book of John. If you read chapter 8 and even chapter 5, start with chapter 5, you will find a person, the Bible says, he, he had been paralyzed for 38 years. He was down, sick. It is like ever since he was born, 38 years, you cannot do anything. The spirit of paralysis is, he had all this person. He was unable to do and He was just there. Day and night sleeping there. And Jesus comes. What does the Bible say in chapter 5? When he came there, he asks, do you want to be whole? And it's like, I have so many hindrances. That's why I'm not doing this. Jesus says, do you want to be whole? And the words of Jesus follows, you can be whole. Take up your mat and walk. Do you know another thing that follows? Your sins are forgiven. Amen. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. What about in chapter 8 of the same book? I want you to see what happened in chapter 8. The Bible talks about an adulterous woman who was caught in adultery. And see what Jesus says in chapter 8. Chapter 8. Let me see, all the way from verse 1. <coughs> Are you seeing it in chapter 8? What is Jesus saying to this adulterous woman? What is Jesus saying? Verse 11. Are you seeing what Jesus is declaring? Yes. <coughs> Let's see from verse, uh, from verse 6. They were using quest this question as a trap in order to have the basis of accusing him. But Jesus went down and started to lie down. This uh, a person was born blind before the adulterous woman. This uh, person was born blind. And if you move to verse 7, when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone back. Yes, the adulterous woman, right? Mm -hmm. Again, he stopped down and wrote on the ground. Verse 11, that's what I wanted. Verse 10, he said, Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, 
where are they? Those people who are accusing you, where are they? Has no one condemned you? Has no one condemned you? Verse 11, no one, sir. She said, then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, go now and live your life and sin no more. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus is saying here simply that the authority to declare your freedom from sin mm. is with me. Amen. Just imagine our brothers and sisters who are perishing and dying in sin. On the other hand, it's like Jesus saying, my son, my daughter, don't you know what you are supposed to be doing? To let them walk free. To let them walk a life that is full of abundant life. That is what you can do for them and they can be free. Mm. He does so on the basis of saving faith. When we just accept the, the saving faith from our Lord Jesus Christ, automatically we shall receive forgiveness of sin. Mm. We do not pay for anything. The disciples were given the authority and what they needed was to recognize that the saving faith that was given was the assurance of their freedom and it is assurance of believers even today. Yeah. So to us, what are we supposed to do? Let us witness. Let us preach the goodness of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us tell the world that there is hope. Let us tell the world that through Jesus, even all the problems we are going through, they can end in Jesus' name. The authority to bring forgiveness of sin is in the lives of the disciples. We have the authority to do that. Hallelujah. Walk knowing that God has entrusted this power and this authority on our lives. What am I saying, brothers and sisters? There is what we need to remember as we do this work of witness, as we do evangelism missions, as we share the good news about the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. One you must remember, the authority to do this comes from him who created the world and the earth. Yeah. Mm. God himself. Mm. And he is our Father. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He is our Lord and God. The compassion that was in Jesus when he was working in this world is still working with his, his children <coughs> as they witness about him. Yeah. The authority is there. No wonder that is why Matthew says, Authority in heaven and on earth is on me. And the same authority I give it to you. Mm. It comes from him. We need to know that Jesus demonstrated everything. Mm. Everything. He did everything that we need to know. And when we follow what he did, we shall move forward in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The authority to proclaim the forgiveness of sin is upon us. Amen. Speak forgiveness. Mm. Speak life in the lives of people. Amen. Encourage people. Yes. Let them know there is hope. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Don't join those who are speaking uh, hopelessness. Mm. Speak hope in the lives of people. Amen. Even in the economy of our country, speak hope. After all, it's not about our efforts. It's not about what we have done. It's about God through his people. And then we realize the blessings. So it is us to speak hope and encourage people that the authority to change things and put them in the way God wanted them to be from the beginning is in the lives of the church. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Preach the gospel. Amen. Preach the good news. Yes. And you know what? The Holy Spirit is in our lives. Amen. The Spirit of God is in us. Mm. Our forefathers desired and really wanted to see such like this. The Holy Spirit is in our lives. Amen. Want us to stand and pray. At this time, I just wanted to sing the song, I Love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because what I was learning from this is everything is the doing of God for us to be empowered to do for God. And everything has been done by God Himself. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. My Lord, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Yes, you love to be that.
thank God because of uh, the love and the grace he has bestowed upon our lives that we can stand and proclaim the good news of our Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you honor. You are so great, so much loving. We celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your love, O oh, Master. There is no one that you are your my God. We declare blessed and gifted in you, in Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my God. As Sunday, God, receive all the glory. Thank you, Lord. Father, through Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we come before you. Yes, Lord. This morning, a very special day. You blessed our lives. The Lord, we can stand before you and worship you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of us the whole month of June. Amen. Here we stand again, the very last Sunday of the month, Amen. to declare that our Father and our God, you've been so good to us. Amen. Thank you for taking care of our families. Amen. Thank you for helping us as a church, oh my God. Oh, yes. Even in these difficult times and moments, mm -hmm. we can still stand and declare and celebrate your salvation. Yes. Amen. We say thank you, my Father and my God. Amen. Now, as a church, we want to speak the blessings of God, Amen. the blessings that accompany the great command and the great commission of yes. our Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. that will cover the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, oh, yes. the authority to go out and witness the love of our Lord Jesus Christ yes. shall be upon our lives in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, we thank you, even the, the authority to speak forgiveness yes. over those people who are bound in sickness because of sin. We declare that they are free and they are, they are set free and they are healed yes. in the mighty name of the Lord. We thank you, our Father, even for those who are still bound in sin. Yes. We pray for the grace of reaching them yes. and sharing the good news of our Lord Jesus. Yes. And Father, we thank you. The saving grace comes from you. Amen. You are ready to save them and set them free. Yes. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are in homes. We pray for them, Abba Father, that bless them wherever they are. Yes. Those who are watching and listening to this message, we pray for them as well. Amen. We speak the grace to witness the grace of salvation yes. in their lives in the name of the Lord. Oh, yes. We thank you, Father. We bless you. We serve you gladly. Mm. You are our God. We celebrate you. Thank you for the month of June. Amen. We thank you even for the month of July yes. that is before us, O oh my Father and my God. Amen. In your grace and in your power, we enter the new month. Amen. Thank you, my Father, for Amen. each one of us. Amen. We love you and we serve you gladly. Yes, for you are our God, you are our Father. Amen. Thank you for loving us, Father. Amen. Thank you for taking us this far, Ebenezer. Oh, yes. There is no one like you. Yes. Thank you, my Father, the hope of the world. The hope of the nations. Amen. You are the only one, oh Jesus. Amen. Thank you, my Father. You are the answer to the problems we are going through. Yes. Even the sin problem that is mm. binding your people. Yeah. You are the answer. Amen. You are the solution. Yes, Lord. That's why we are proud of you even today. Amen. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Lord. Amen. And now our Father who is at in heaven. Amen. Lord in thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom, shalom. God bless.